Well, hello everyone. Good day to you. Welcome back to our second episode of video podcast and our topic today is lesson 2. This is what we discussed last week. We actually haven't finished our discussion lesson 2, so that's why I put it the second episode part 1. And last week we have discussed and elaborated the topic of principles of presentation. This is not something new to us because as we have discussed together that presentation has been part of our daily life, not just for teachers, but even students also have done presentation. In fact, you told me that last week. You you did multiple presentations in campus on any kind of topic. So let's review again what we have learned last time. When we come to presentation, we cannot take that off from public speaking. In the art of public speaking, whenever you do a talk, whatever the topic is, in front of a big audience or small audience, what you are doing can be categorized as public speaking. And there are two kinds of public speaking. The first one is speech. The second one is presentation. Now, People wonder, what are the differences? Well, I think the pictures are very clear to us. When you do speech, you don't you stand behind a lectern delivering your speech orally without using any technology. You just stand behind the lectern. You read manuscript in the form of paper. But nowadays, because of technology advancement, you use tablets. So speech is actually the basic form of public speaking. There is no much of technology stuff there. Just you, the microphone, and your speech text. Presentation is a whole lot different thing. Because this is not just about speech. This is also about using technology. This is about using computer. This is also about multimedia. Now, there is no such thing in speech. In speech, it's just you and the audience. But in presentation, you have, there is you, audience, and the screen. So let's elaborate them in details. Speech still exists today. First of all, because it is simple. All you have to do is prepare your speech in on a piece of paper. You can write it down or you can type it on your computer and then print it. And it is very flexible that you can deliver your speech in formal and informal occasion. There is no need for technology. Even if there is no microphone, all you, all you need to do is just speak as loud as you can. However, there is a drawback with speech. It is rich. It is not rich in content. And I'm talking about multimedia content. Now, your speech can be very interesting, but since there is no multimedia support, because you don't use technology to support your speech, then you must be able to describe what you are talking about in words, and you have to be very good at it. You must be able to describe what you are talking about in words. So that's the challenge. It's difficult, but it's by far still the simplest form of public speaking but this time in modern era computer presentation take over speech even though we still have speech but nowadays people don't just do speeches people do presentations why the reason are the reasons are simple they are sophisticated after all you use computer led lcd projector they are very sophisticated and then you can Use, you can do presentation for formal or informal occasion, not just in classroom. You can also do presentation in your office. You can also do your presentation outside office. It is very rich in terms of multimedia because it, with computer presentation, you don't just talk and talk, but you also display. You display photo, you display pictures, you display charts, you display uh, or, or you play audio. It's very rich in terms of multimedia. 
But the drawback, the negative part of computer presentation is you need technology support. You need computer. And computer is not enough. You need projector. And sometimes you will need speakers. So these are the strength of speech and computer presentation and also the weaknesses. Now, depending on your needs, speech until now still exists. When you, when you have, whenever you have to do uh, a speech in such a short time, doing speech without using PowerPoint is the simplest one. But you must be very good in de describing details. But if you are not that good in describing details, or if you have long long time to prepare, then you can use computer presentation. You can use your PowerPoint, create slideshow, and then you fill your slideshow with videos, audios, photos, pictures to make your presentation rich. And besides, by making by using computer presentation, you can talk more instead of doing traditional speech. So these two have its own pluses and minuses. However, when we talk about our lesson last week, our focus will be on computer presentation. And what kind of tools do we need for that? Now, in terms of doing presentation tool, computer is not the only thing that we can use today. We can still use whiteboard to the presentation. With a whiteboard and a good marker, you can still do a simple presentation. You use the whiteboard to draw chart, to draw, to draw objects, to, to write your message. This is the simplest tool of presentation. However, if you want to be more sophisticated, you want to be rich in multimedia, you can use computer presentation. But you will need computer, you will need projector, and you must be very familiar in terms of using slideshow, slideshow software such as PowerPoint. Occasionally, we don't have the luxury of using technology. We have to use traditional tool. Well, you can still use poster. For in, in this example, you use map. Here, the person uses map to explain or to talk about geography or any other topic. So we can use poster and we can also use flipboard. And this is what we call as flipboard because uh, you can flip it. Actually, a flipboard is not like a uh, whiteboard it's smaller and it consists of papers which you can write on and then you can flip it when you're done so this is very different from whiteboard with whiteboard after you write you can erase your your writing but in flipboard it's a piece it's a big piece of paper so you cannot erase it once you write on it you're done you flip the page over so that's flipboard so there are four basic presentation tools that people usually use today. And computer is not the only thing that you can do. Now in terms of presentation, whatever your presentation is, it always consists of three parts. The first one is introduction, body, and closing. So it's like story, it's like movies. Your presentation must consist of these three parts. There is a beginning, there is the middle, and there is also the end. Now, what is the function of introduction? When you do presentation, your introduction is the part where you introduce the topic of your presentation. Are you going to sell insurance plan? Are you going to promote MLM business? Are you going to propose ideas for company outing plan? So introduction is where you introduce the topic of your presentation. And then you also give background of the presentation. Why? Why do you think people have to listen to your presentation? And then you have to show purpose. What is the purpose of your presentation? Is it to inform? Is it to persuade? Or is it to describe? And at the last part of your introduction, you have to outline your presentation. 
when you are done with the first part, you continue with the body. The body is where you put your explanation. So introduction is, is like leading your audience into your presentation. It's about attracting your audience. The body, this is the biggest part of your presentation. This is where you explain. This is where you give details about what you are talking about. So after you introduce the topic, the body is where you explain the topic of your presentation. This is where you share facts, you share data, you give examples. This is where you show pictures, photos, videos. And the last part of your presentation is the closing. In the closing part, you not only close your presentation, but you also restate the main idea. You summarize the topic that you have introduced in the first part. And at the end, you conclude. So these are the three parts of presentation. Now, whatever the topic is, whatever your purpose, your presentation must have these three parts. Introduction, body, and closing. Now, in terms of expressions, there are many useful expressions. And as always, Whenever we begin our presentation, we start with greetings. So we tell our audience, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Or if you want to be neutral, you can say good day. Uh, you, can may, you may also say hello, hi everyone, hey ladies and gentlemen. But these are informal. Very, very informal is hello guys, hey fellas. Hey folks, so these are the standard greetings. They never get old. They are always useful. They are very common, but they never get old. So let's practice the expressions with me. Please repeat after me. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Now. The occasion may be at daytime or it may also be at nighttime, but you have to be energetic and you have to show, to project your energy from your voice, from your intonation. So don't say good morning, good afternoon, don't be bored, don't be tired, be powerful, be energetic. So you say good morning everyone, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, good evening sir. So this is the way you use the greetings. Don't just say the word, but you also project your feeling. Good day. Hi, everyone. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, guys. Hey, folks. See? Energy. Show your energy. And then, after you greet them, thank your listeners. I know it's not the end of your presentation, but you have to be grateful that your audience are willing to come to listen to you, and you have to appreciate that. But show your appreciation by saying, thank you for coming to this meeting, or thank you for coming to this presentation. Thank you for coming on short notice. Ah, the second one here, this is when you do presentation very uh, suddenly or when you it's, it's like doing emergency presentation so on short notice means on short notice berarti pemberitahuan mendadak so jika kamu mau berterima kasih untuk orang-orang yang telah bersedia datang mendengarkan kamu presentasi padahal pemberitahuannya itu bersifat terlambat atau mendadak maka kita menggunakan istilah on short notice. So, let's say thank you for coming on short notice. And then, you can also use the third expression for people who come to your presentation voluntarily. Jika orang-orang yang datang ke presentasi kamu melakukannya karena suka rela, maka kita perlu menyatakan 
menggunakan ekspresi thank you for giving your time ini jika penonton audiensnya adalah orang-orang yang mendengarkan secara sukarela or and then if you do your presentation in the form of panel discussion or in a seminar then you may use the last expression thank you for giving this wonderful opportunity to present my latest paper on biomechanism nah, ekspresi yang keempat ini sangat pas sekali jika anda melakukan presentasi saat menyajikan makalah di dalam sebuah seminar oke okay. time to practice Please repeat after me. Thank you for coming to this meeting. Thank you for coming to this presentation. Thank thank you for coming on short notice. Thank you for giving your time to listen to what I want to present today. Thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity to present my latest paper on biomechanism. So, that's the way you use the expressions. So, after you greet your audience next part thank them appreciate your listeners for giving themselves a time to listen to your presentation always do that thank the listeners next introducing subject when you introduce your subject the expressions are mostly formal uh, there are also informal exp- expressions but When it comes to introducing subject, the expressions are not different from between formal from informal ones. So these are the expressions that you might find useful in introducing a subject. You can say what I'd like to talk about is our plan of reorganization next month. I'm going to inform you about the plan of our company outing. My presentation is about the proposal of our work schedule change. The focus of my talk is about hiring as a consultant for company's new logo. So these are the expressions to introduce subject of our talk. Let's practice them with me. What I'd like to talk about is our plan of reorganization next month. I'm going to inform you about the plan of our company outing. My presentation is about the proposal of work schedule change. The focus of my talk is about hiring a consultant for company's new logo. Yeah. As you can see, these are the expressions. You may modify the expressions by changing the words to suit your needs. But the beginning are just like what I have underlined. in this slide what I'd like to talk about I'm going to inform you about my presentation is about or the focus of my talk is about next is elaborating outline so you introduce the topic of your talk then you should also elaborate the outline of your presentation Some of the expressions here are taken from our student book and I also add other expressions. Uh, you can say 
I have divided this presentation into three parts. This presentation is divided into three sections. This presentation consists of three parts. I've split my talk into three sections. And the most casual one, there are three things I'd like to talk about. These are the expressions that you can use when you want to elaborate outline of your presentation. This is like giving your audience an idea, a picture of what your presentation is going to be like. So don't, don't ever do a presentation without giving outline to your audience because as listeners, they, they have the right to know what you are going to talk about. They have the right to know how long you are going to talk about. So by giving them the outline, you can, you can tell your audience what they can expect from this presentation. And remember, when you say, I have divided my presentation or I have split my talk, just stick to the rule of three. Don't go more than three parts. So, psychologically speaking, three, three, number three is the, the safe number for people to tolerate. People can have a very long concentration when they have to. But if you say that my presentation is divided into ten parts, then your listeners will, wow, ten parts? Are we going to spend two hours? Do we have coffee break? So, make it three. Unless, unless you have a lot of to talk about, then you just limit, then you may use three, uh, 10 parts or 20 parts. Yeah. But generally speaking, use the rules of three, three parts. Maximum, well, okay, maybe you can make it four or five, but don't go beyond five. People will be bored if you talk more than five items in one presentation. And besides, if you talk so many, then how many items that your listeners can remember at the end of your presentation? So three is the safe number. It is the safe psychological number. Now, let's practice this expression together. Please repeat after me. I've divided in this presentation into three parts. Now, next. This presentation is divided into three sections. Another. This presentation consists of three parts. Next one. I've split my talk into three sections. And the last. There are three things I'd like to talk about. So these are the expressions you may use when you elaborate outline of your presentation. And before, before you start your presentation right away, remind your listeners about their opportunity to ask you questions. Now this is a very important issue because, like it or not, when you do presentation, some people might might be asking questions in their mind about some points of your presentation, the points that they don't understand. And they have the right. After all, they are the listener. Uh, if you want to make your, your presentation interactive, there should be Q&A. There should be question and answer session. Now, the, the problem is, when should we give our listeners a chance to ask questions? Can they ask questions in the middle of the presentation or should they ask questions after your presentation? 
Now for this problem, for this issue, you decided yourself. You decided yourself whether you give the chance to ask question in the middle of your presentation or after you finish your presentation. Personally, I prefer to have Q&A after presentation. That way, my listeners will get the whole picture of my presentation. I don't really like it if my listeners ask question in the middle of presentation. I, not only it is disturbing because they interrupt my explanation, but also sometimes in my experience, people who ask question in the middle of the presentation actually will get the answers in my presentation. So it's better that you do your presentation first from the beginning to the end and then at the end your listeners can ask you any kind of questions related to your presentation. However, I'll let you be the judge. You choose your style. You're the presenter, you have your own style. If you are comfortable to handle questions in the middle of presentation, go ahead. But if you prefer to finish your presentation first, then tell your listeners. And these are the expressions that we can use to tell our listeners when they can ask questions. Let's start with the first ones. Please feel free to interrupt me if you have questions. If you have any question, you may interrupt me as we go along. Now, the first two expressions signal that you are willing to be interrupted whenever someone wants to ask questions. But if you prefer to have the Q&A after your presentation, the following two expressions are very useful. You can say, if you have any question, I'd be glad if you keep it until the end of this presentation. Another, I'd be glad to answer your questions at the end of my presentation. Jadi dua expression yang pertama untuk menangani pertanyaan di tengah-tengah presentasi. Sementara dua ekspresi yang terakhir untuk menanggapi pertanyaan sesudah presentasi. Now, it's time for us to practice. So, please repeat after me. Please, feel free to interrupt me if you have questions. If you have any question, you may interrupt me as we go along. If you have any question, I'd be glad if you keep it until the end of this presentation. I'd be glad to answer your questions at the end of my presentation. That's not so difficult, right? Okay, so we have covered the expressions for introducing top uh, for greeting, introducing topic, thanking audience, outlining, uh, and also giving a chance to ask question. However, it's not the end yet. Here you are. In this slide, you have a sample of opening speech to a presentation. Now, please read while you listen to me. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you today? I hope you all do well. Thank you for coming to this meeting today. This is a wonderful opportunity for me to share my ideas on increasing efficiency in our company's recycling plan. I have divided my talk into three parts. First, I propose using modern machine. Second, our company should collaborate with local community. And third, we have to be selective with items that we're going to recycle. If you have questions, I'd like you to keep them until the end of my presentation. So, I'm going to start with... Uh, that's 
that's that's just sample sample speech but at least it gives you some idea about the right way to open your presentation so you start with greeting asking condition and then thanking the audience for coming uh, expressing your gratitude and you give outline and after that uh, telling your audience about when they can ask question i hope you find this slide very useful and i hope this episode of our lesson to last week help you in understanding what we have discussed in our meeting last saturday see you next time in our next episode on video podcast of cv6 lessons